Ah, welcome back to the Boy Time channel. Today we are doing a, our fourth uh, reaction recap. Um, for those who don't know, this is our series where we uh, go over and touch on things we missed or new discoveries from the past 10 or so reactions we've done. Um, and this one's going to be a long one because I feel like this is the best 10 we've had so far. So far. Yeah. Um, I got a lot to say about a lot of these. So it's also the first one where I'm, that's mostly albums I've not heard. Um, oh. Usually for these videos, the wheel likes me a lot. So for our main series, I just listen to things I've already heard, and then Jerry has to talk about them. Um, so I'm excited for this week's. But uh, do we want to show our lists and stuff beforehand or after? We're, we're going to put timestamps because it's going to be a long video. So if you want to skip around, feel free. But We can do that at the end. Okay. So you'll see everything that's on our list, everything that's on the fan wheel, Everything that's on Bab Jab's wheel, it's all on one Googie Doc. And just a bunch of screenshots are going to be all over the screen. It's at the very end. confusing, but you will get content and there will be an album. That's, I'll make it that's work. The main thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. So your, your viewer request might be coming soon or not. I don't know. It's We have a lot, but uh, our next two viewer reactions are LP from JPEG Mafia and The Dreaming from Kate Bush, since those got number two and three in the poll. Um, so those will be coming about two or three weeks. So yes, stay tuned. But um, I guess we can jump in. Uh, we got two new releases in in this batch too. So yeah, um, technically the first one that kicked this off was the weekend with Dawn FM. Wow, crazy to think that this was in the same batch as Kate Bush. True. Right next to each other, Right too. next to each other, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Do you want to start, or should I start? Um, you can start us off. Okay. Um, well, I said in the video, I think this was towards the end when we were kind of wrapping up, that I wanted to save all thoughts on how it compares to After Hours because I didn't want another Star-Crossed situation. Cause I, yeah. like, <laughs> Both had PTSD. Yes. That. The infamous star-crossed situation. Yes. Um, so, you know, I really enjoyed it, but I'm like, I don't want to say anything because then I, if I listen to this like two weeks from now and I hate it, then I'm going to really regret everything I said in that video. Um, but I could have said that it's just as good as After Hours. I, I think I would safe. put them right, like, level with each other because um, I, I really enjoy After Hours. Um you know, I think every time I think that we actually we said this when we were uh, talking off camera, that like when we listen to we After Hours, we like it's that uh, we like After Hours more than Don FM, and then when we listen to Don FM, we like yep. it more than After Hours. Um, I think you said that, so that's a very mm -hmm. accurate statement. Um, but yeah, very good um, album. Epic, yeah. I think I'm putting Don FM over After Hours, just personally. Okay. Um, very slim margin, but I feel like After Hours has a cool narrative, and it turns out as much chart-topping hits, hits as humanly possible, and it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But my enjoy my enjoyability with Don FM, I think, is higher because it's so smooth. The transitions are killer. The yeah. whole thing's just a very fluid piece. Um, I, and Jim Carrey elevates it so much. He does. It's weird that just such a small element just elevates the record that much higher mm -hmm. but jim carrey is fantastic on it um the tyler and wayne features are cool they don't really need to be there yeah. um but i'm not mad that they are there it breaks it up a little bit but um it's interesting because i was kind of skeptical of gasoline in their first reaction oh, video yeah. i was like okay this is interesting but now like gasoline's my favorite song off the record so it's it's definitely taken a turn um and I think Best Friends as well. Uh, I didn't really like that one initially, but more listens. I, I really love the beat on that one. It just took me a while lyrically to grow to it because it was very simple. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I love this thing. Uh, there's such a groove to it. Um, I always forget how good it is until I put it on again. And I'm like, oh, okay. We're still hitting. <laughs> yeah. I think it's it's definitely like one of the most consistent records yes, that I've heard in a consistent. while. Um, I will echo. I'm not the biggest fan of the Lil Wayne verse. The Tyler verse yeah. is fine. I think it's a little too short. 
Um, it is. I think it works better than the lane feature, though. I would agree. Ranking features, but there's only two, technically. Yes. But you yeah, know, Quincy, Quincy Jones and really Jim Carrey. Well. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think if we are, if I'm looking at my winning two playlist, I, I guess we should probably mention we do have Spotify playlists in the description. Um, Bevy just has his highlights. I have my highlights and the songs that I didn't like, so you can. Um, see what I did and didn't like, and then you can comment and say yeah. how much I suck and how yep. my opinion doesn't matter. Um, so that's there for you. But looking in my highlights playlist, I think the only mainline songs that aren't there are uh, Best Friends. And I think and this is going to be a little bit of a, a surprise. But Take My Breath is also not on the mm. playlist. Okay. I, I like it in the context of the album, but if I'm going to play Take My Breath, I'm going to play the single version. Um, because I don't like the single version for whatever reason. I don't know. I, I had this some kind of awakening during the reaction where I'm like, wow, this song is really good, and I never like gave it the, the light of day at all. It See, completely <laughs> changed my opinion on it. Well, I was actually a big fan of Take My Breath, mm before the album came out um, and then he released the extended version and it's the same version as the one that's on the record with the ex extended intro and then the long break between the outro um, and I'm like oh that's weird it kind of messes with the pacing of the song um, so it's like eh and you know it does kind of suck because I did try putting the single version in like a playlist um, but then the the transition isn't seamless you gotta anymore. experience it it doesn't i know you're, you're cheating yourself well i i've listened to the album so many times i don't need you that. gotta you gotta groove out to it Just the, <laughs> the transition from uh what it was the third track uh yeah uh how do i yeah. make you love me yeah into the breathing into like the oh, it's so good oh i I, so I like it in the context of the record but mm -hmm. Um, just if, if we're taking all these tracks standalone, which I tried to do with this playlist as I'm like listening to it, um, cause I've just been shuffling the playlist and getting rid of songs that I didn't like. Um, and then when that song came on, it was such a long intro that I'm like, if I'm going to listen to this song, it's going to be the single version by itself in the context of the record. I don't skip it, but that's, that's my reasoning. Um, so Shoot me down in the comments. Tell me I'm a dumb idiot. But I thought that one. Get him. This is a really good record. Yes. Top three this year so yes. far for me. I would agree. Epic. Um, Kate Bush, the beginning of our viewer marathon. That's right. Hounds of Love, specifically. Yes. Should I start? Might as well. Okay. We'll just bounce around. Um, I enjoyed this one. Uh, I think I have grown to enjoy it a little bit more than I did in the reaction. Not that I necessarily didn't like it in the reaction, um, but, you know, listening back to some of these songs uh, again recently, uh, I really, really like her backing vocals. I think those are a, a highlight for me. Um, her little vocalizations like, yeah, yeah, yo, just stuff yeah, like that. I just fun with it. Yeah, she has fun, and I really like that. Um, I think her voice did take some getting used to for me, but I think I've grown to like it. I am definitely interested in checking out her uh, other stuff, the Dreaming coming soon. Um, but yeah, this is a great introduction into the world of Kate Bush. Yes. And let me check the track listing. Okay, they didn't do this. Um, I did not know the length of a concept that this record is until I was reading all the comments. Um, so thanks for the context. I knew something was going on during the reaction. I just didn't, I got confused because usually narrative albums start at the track one and not track five. Yeah. Um, or track six, I mean. So it, that was a little weird, but I, I'm loving this album. Um, I mean, the first five tracks are all like, these are like single tracks mm -hmm. where they're like, let's just go out and just make some of the best 80s pop there is yeah um, uh, cloud busting probably is my favorite like that the marching of that song is incredible 
the vocals are fantastic just like the airiness and like just the marching forward of it it's nothing like too extravagant but at the same time it's just hits all the right the right buttons mm -hmm. um I might I think I like it more in running up that hill even though running up that hill uh that hill seems to be like the one I really on like this record one. um I also really like it I think Cloud, Cloud Boston takes it though okay but um so the whole ninth wave part of the album track six through twelve um now that I have the context of that I'm r I really like it I've listened to the record three times in the past two days um just digging deep into that and the production is really next level this is one of those where we got hindered, where we had to stop and talk about things. Yeah. Um, but if you play through that whole ninth wave section with no pausing, it's really fantastic. It feels like a like a never ending story movie, like mm -hmm. in audio form. Yeah. Um, and it's really fantastic. And Jig of Life, I like. We're we're back. Oh, um, good. Now that I've heard it a couple times and in the context of everything, I'm like, yeah, this is this is really good. good. It just, it really like. <laughs> threw me for a loop in the reaction. I'm like, holy! I didn't know she was uh, uh, Scottish either. So, it, it, I guess or Irish or whatever it is. It know, Irish. Know Irish. Um, I, I didn't know she was. So, but she is. And apparently, there's more jigs on her other records. So I'm excited for that. I, I'm excited. I we'll enjoy see. Jig of Life a lot. Yes, but yeah, uh, very classic record. Um, unbelievably good production and vocals and stuff. Um, I'm always surprised like especially with maggot brain later mm -hmm. um how good production can be from older material before computers kind of took over and ruled production yeah um I'm, also, I'm super impressed on how like cinematic things can still be um but yeah next level record uh it's weird putting this next to dawn fm because they're <laughs> in a way kind of like the same style of like a very fluid experience with yeah. these uh signature things in it so but I'm taking this over the weekend. It's not really a hot take, but wow, um, it's a hot take for me. I mean, yeah. I've been waiting for the dreaming for a while, so we'll get to that very soon. Okay. Um, All right. Moving on to Peggy. All my heroes are cornballs. Um, I'll probably have you go first again, just because I've heard this record a million times over the past three years. Yes. Um, this one's a little bit tricky to talk about um, because, you know. Oh, so. This is very straightforward music. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's so much to it. There's a lot. Believe it or not. Um, you know, every time I, I haven't listened to the whole record. I haven't listened to any of these all the way through again. I've just been listening to this playlist um, the past couple of days. Um, so, But every time a Peggy song came on, it was always very distinct because nothing else in this playlist sounds like that. Um, but I think, you know, some of the very obvious things, his production is very impressive. Um, I really enjoy all of the fun samples he uses. Um, they still make me laugh, even, you know, months after listening to it. Um, and, you know, his performance, his charisma, off the charts. Um, you know, we've gotten a lot of comments about LP, um, the offline stuff now on Spotify, so we'll be, be actually be able to uh, do it justice. That's my man's right there. Yeah, very excited for that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Very good stuff. I think highlight songs for me. Um, I really like uh, Jesus Forgive Me, I Am a Thought, um, Free the Frail, and I think Basic Bitch Tear Gas. Pretty yes, fun. Sir. I love TLC. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, record's fantastic. Amazing. Um, it's one of the best of the past decade, in my opinion. Really next level stuff. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorites ever. So I feel like I can't add too much here. Um, I haven't been listening to it since the reaction. I've just kind of been still sitting with LP. Um, and I will have a lot to say about that in the reaction. So. At least, yeah, I've heard it a lot, but I'm still going to have some insights and stuff, hopefully. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, this record is just so dense and complex, but still there's a groove somehow in this chaos. Um, and I I guess we'll see how that comes to a T on LP. And yeah. Cap off this, this piggy trilogy, unofficial trilogy. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, love, love, love this record. Uh, favorite songs are all of them. 
minus the Sorrel song. I don't really like that one. Wow. Um, didn't need to be there. But everything else is pretty perfect. All right. Uh, Controversial next. hour. What? Uh, <laughs> Butterfly Mariah Carey. I'm going to have you start on this one. Okay. Um, I have a lot to say about this one, though. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, this was an unexpected twist of events. Um, this is like one of those videos where you make, and then you're like, all right, that was a cool reaction. We're going to upload it. Mm. And then, like, all of a sudden it blows up out of nowhere. And I'm like, frick, I forgot that that happens sometimes randomly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, this record is a definite grower. Um, on first listen, like I was taking in a lot of things because I expected one thing. I got something completely different and it actually threw me for a loop, which I'm usually good on that. Usually that doesn't get to me mm -hmm. <laughs> this time. It was like, Whoa, um, I wasn't really understanding it. First listen. Um, this is a very context heavy record now that I, uh, yeah. You guys have been talking about it in the comments for the past three weeks, and I've done uh, extra digging on it just so I can, like, I'm trying to understand this record more. Um, but, yeah, very context-heavy. Uh, I guess this is kind of a divorce album, but also, like, a, a transformation from, like, traditional, um, like, singer-songwriter uh, into traditional, like, R&B, like, the wet route she wanted to go after she got free from her label. Um but yeah, I, funny enough, like when I listened to this record in passing and not stressed about like, okay, what are the lyrics that I need to stick with me? I've enjoyed it a lot more just in passing. Mm -hmm. Um, like especially just honey, like the opening track, it's just such like a groove. Um, it's just fantastic music to have on. Uh, there's a lot of albums that we can dig very deep into on this channel. Um, and some albums that will just be there and uh kind of like grow with you gradually this one's definitely one of those um i think i still stand by my favorite tracks from the video i think the roof is probably the, my favorite one just because that that mob deep sample is used so well mm. um such a unique track um outside closer um probably my second favorite or love that one as well uh mm. vocal performances are amazing throughout all of it um production is pretty great as well I don't know. I talked about production a lot in the reaction just because, like, you know, the vocals are good. Yeah. But it's Mariah Carey. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of, like, mm -hmm. you don't even need to say it. It's a given. It, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like for a lot of these tracks, too, they're very fluid. Um, they're long. There's a lot of ballads. Um, so I think the best way to enjoy this album is just to, like, listen to it and not think about it, and then the tracks will grow with you gradually. That's, that's what's worked with me, at least. Mm -hmm. um, so... Definitely, like, am seeing the hype of this record now. It just took a while to get to it. Um, but, yeah, appreciate all the comments, like, mentioning, like, what the record's about and stuff, because I had absolutely zero idea. Um, of course, that was the one week I didn't pull up lyrics. Usually I'm good on that um, if I need to be. But, like, didn't have them for this one, didn't have them for Kate Bush. Kate Bush I got right away. This one I was like, I had no idea. Yeah. Um, Songwriting is pretty good, but like her highlight is obviously her voice. So mm. I feel like lyrically, like these aren't the people that I look too deep in lyrically just because like the voice is so overpowering where it's like you can say whatever you want to and sing like that. And I literally won't care because the singing's too good yeah. to like even care about songwriting wise. But mm. the songwriting is quite good. Okay. I haven't looked into lyrics at all. Um, yeah. I, I don't really know what else to say um you know definitely was not expecting this video to blow up we probably would have acted differently maybe i don't know i definitely wanted I just, to i was just moving the whole weekend and i was like dead inside and we yeah. recorded for some reason i should have not recorded that day but whatever and i was just my uh typical uh bad bad music critic self <laughs> Um, so, you know, that's fine. Um, but you know, I have been enjoying these tracks a whole lot more when they have been coming up. Um, I think my favorites are probably Honey and Baby Doll. Mm. Um, I really love the vocal outro at the end. Yes. And I don't know if 
you've noticed this or if it's just me, but that it reminds me so much of the Pixar short that played before Finding Nemo about the little <laughs> snowman in the snow globe. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah it's like the that music, does. it sounds like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I, I don't remember if I said anything about that in the reaction or if I just thought it, but every single time that song comes on, it makes me think of it. Um, so a little bit of a tangent aside, but I, I do enjoy it. It's not like one of my favorites in this set of 10, but that's just because we've had some real highlights. Um, but I, it's good. You know, what else do you need to say? She sings nice and it sounds good. So, you know, come on, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely one where it's like appreciating all components of a record while also realizing that it's not for you personally. Yeah. Which is something I'm not used to. Um, usually most things can click with me like either pretty soon after this one took a while for some reason. I don't know why. Cause it's just good R and B music and it took a long time for it to like get to the point where I'm like, okay, this is really good. And maybe because I was trying too hard. I literally just put it on at work today and I was vibing out the whole hour. So that, that, that was literally the key to doing it is just like chilling out instead of being like, okay, I need to understand why this record is like so high up and praised, even though it is good. I was wondering what took it to that next level. Mm. And maybe I shouldn't have been worrying about that because it is very good. Um, so I'm interested to see uh, Emancipation of Mimi because yeah, I will say there are a lot of ballads on this album and ballads aren't my thing, especially when you put them back to back to back to back. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm wondering, cause like the R and B cuts on here are fantastic. Yeah. So I'm really curious to see once we get that one, um, how that's going to sound. It's on the wheel. It is on the wheel. So, Which, you know, very small chance that it'll be picked, but yeah, it is, it's stuff. there. Maybe we'll have like to do another fan marathon. No, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do another one. Um, <laughs> this has probably been my favorite part of reacting is doing the, the viewer requests. So we're just taking a little break. Jerry needs some albums to, to show to me since he's never really gotten the the thing of the series yet since the wheel hates him. It does. Um, I, but we reworked I, that now. So now he's guaranteed a spot every other week. So I have some albums to show you, and I also have some albums. Uh, I redid my list a little bit, too. Uh, and I have been double dipping into fan stuff also. So, mm. you know, Paper Mache Dream Balloons on there. Uh, the All Delighted People Sufjan thing is on yes. there. Um, so y- there is a little bit of yeah. double dipping. Um, I got a lot of double dipping, so. That's um, fine. But we'll see at the end of the video. We'll go over it. Yeah. Um, what's next? Completely Brave Little Abacus. Years. Uh, Brave Little Abacus just got back from the discomfort. We're all right. Mouthful. Uh, I, this definitely is not my cup of tea. Uh, this is not anything that is going, I'm going to put on, you know, uh, as I'm going to work or whatever. Um, coward. I know. I I, love screaming on the way to work. (laughs) Um, but you know, if you know me, you know, I love a good, uh, I love good vocals, not saying that these are bad vocals, they're interesting. But they're very interesting. <laughs> um, it's like if Blink-182 like cloned himself and like the cloning procedure went wrong and it like came out like a weird mutant. That's kind of what that guy reminds me of. His voice is a caricature of Blink-182's <laughs> voice. It's just like exaggerated. More. Yeah. Um, that being said, there are some good tracks on here. Um, you know, Boy's Theme. Surprisingly, Classic. like one of the best songs that we've heard in this like Mm -hmm. 10 album thing so good like it comes on and it surprises me every time i'm like what this is on like some random midwest emo album that we checked out so it's an interlude too (laughs) it's so good it like especially because we had um what is it on black country mark's theme yes um very similar that's think, true. They are pretty similar. I think I prefer Boy's theme over Mark's theme every single time. I think time. they're very close. They're, they're very close. Very yeah. But Boy's theme, man, gets mm-hmm. me going every time. Well, it doesn't because it's very chill. But it's like, it wow. Is. It surprises right. me. Um, yeah. But I think, yeah. uh, you know, a couple of the actual emo tracks on here that were pretty good. 
Um, you know, a highway got paved over my future. It's getting cut off. So uh, I drive it going to school. Uh, very good track. Uh, also, the, the intro track, pile, no pile, pile. I think we uh, talked about that in the video. Also, yes. very good songs. Um, but it's, it's nothing I'm going to be putting on. But I did really enjoy uh, listening to it. I think it was a good experience. Yeah, this was a really interesting experience. Um, this is the stuff I love where it's like, this sounds like nothing I've ever heard before. And that's like the cool experiences I get um, from music. Mm. Uh, so we go from Mariah Carey, which like confused me for being like so smooth R and B to the point where I couldn't understand it to like this, which is just a collage of sound. And I'm like, yeah, I vibe with this immediately. <laughs> so okay, my brain good. is broken. Um, but I, I do really like this thing. Uh, it's not for everybody, obviously. Um, if you're a vocal snob of any like extent, this is probably going to like kill you. Mm. Um, I know there are a lot of people that are like that, just like casual music listeners and even some people that like, you know, listen to a lot of things. Um, but I, I really love the instrumentation here. A lot of art rock comes into this, um, which I'm very excited about. I, I was very impressed by the switching of fast and slow and tr transitionary periods within the tracks. Mm -hmm. um, I thought they worked really well and like, the singer's voice is so egregious where it's like you want to laugh at it, but then like halfway through the track, it just flows so well into a slow part and his voice still goes through and it's like, it's still ridiculous, but it like just works with everything. Mm -hmm. um, but displaying emotion through a voice that silly is probably hard, but he, he does it um, for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think track two into voice theme, like that whole six and a half minute segment there is really fantastic. Um, you get everything through those two tracks. Uh, the blah 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 is also fantastic. Um, the one thing is like his songwriting is so good, but you can't even understand it <laughs> unless you have a lyric sheet pulled, pulled up. Yeah, which you know it's really good to read along to, but if you're listening to it casually, you'll pick up on some stuff. But it's like I don't know what's happening. Right. But blah 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 is fantastic songwriting track. Um, I love the Sufjan style synth outro on it. Um, just that moment of serenity after like, especially after like a highway got paved, that song is like ridiculously loud and fast. Mm -hmm. And then blah, blah, blah's first half has like that sonic sample that's like really loud and it just keeps looping and looping. And then you just reach this point of bliss through synths through two minutes and it's really, really good. Um, but yeah, really fun record. Uh, not something you put on every day. It's very selective for me where it's like, yeah, I'm feeling a little quirky, a little wild. I'll throw on this one. Um, yeah. Or if I need to scare anybody, you just put on this album. That, hey. That's that's the key. Um, yeah, you if go. you want to act pretentious around your music friends, be like, oh, you've never heard this, and then put on one of the tracks from these, and then you're good. Yeah. Um, but don't do that. That's stupid. Nobody <laughs> likes it. People do that. Um, but yeah, good record. Um, very, very impressive. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you guys rec uh, recommended the other album, and some people have said it's better than this one, so I'm, I'm interested if we yes. get that one. That one is on the wheel. Yes. So, cool. It, there's a chance. Uh, Black Country New Road, ants from up there. I will have you start for obvious reasons, probably. Um. Yeah. So. This one is another one where there's a lot to talk about, like JPEG. Yes. Um. It's it's definitely, I guess, kind of it's grown on me a little bit. But this is going to be similar to the um, uh, Brave Little Abacus. This is not something that I would generally throw on. Um, for whatever reason, it has not really clicked with me, um, even though I think in the reaction I was I was very fairly positive. I think I had a, a lot of good things to say, and I do stand by those. Um, but this there definitely... There was a sandwich between me and Bab Jab who wouldn't shut up, so... Yeah, <laughs> it was it was a little bit, you know, uh, a little bit of a third wheel situation, but I wanted you to be there to experience it. Uh, I'm glad I did. Um, I think, you know, no question. This is better than their first record. Um, and, you know, there are some standout tracks here. I think Concord, Chaos Space Marine, Mark's theme. Uh, those are some great tracks for me. Um, 
I, I really enjoy like maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where to go because it's, I, it's one of those things where you were talking about earlier with Mariah Carey where it's something that you can appreciate every aspect of mm. it, but it's just not, for some reason there's a disconnect and I have no idea what that is. Um, so, I don't know. You can talk. Yay. Um, I won't shut up about this record ever, probably. So, uh, that's a thing. That This will be in the mid-year video. If we do one of those, it'll be in the end-of-the-year videos, whenever we do those. Um, but, yeah, best album I've heard all year, best album I've heard probably all decade, I would think. I don't think... I, I mean, we had Punisher, but, like, this kind of blows Punisher out of the water. It does the same thing Punisher does, but, like, ten times better, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. Everything about this record seemed mythical. Like, by the moment, it like you get the first three singles. Um, it should be kind of illegal to do Chaos Space Marine and then Bread Song and then Concord. It's like, hey, here's some really long tracks and then Chaos Space Marine, which is just crazy because mm -hmm. your first teasers. What are we going to do from here? Um, but yeah, the, the whole record is like absolutely flawless, in my opinion. Um, I don't, it's like one of those, it's, it's already an instant classic within the community, within the indie community. Um, I kind of saw that coming after I heard Concord. I was blown away when I heard Concord the first time, whenever that came out in like December, I was like, okay, something's coming. Like this is going to be huge. Um, but just experiencing an album release like this is like something I haven't really seen since I guess damn would be the one, the last real big one where everybody was like, whoa, um, mm -hmm. But even Dan was a little controversial because it wasn't as good as the other ones. But I, I kind of called this one the second coming of Blonde. I'm going to hold by that. Um, but I, I, I don't know. Everything is like they've mastered the long song format, which is one of my favorite things is like well done long songs. Um, it makes every song seem so important and impactful. And every song is songwriting is top notch on all these. Putting 110% into every aspect and every single track. Um it's one that's like very long and fluid, but one that I'll put on pretty much every single day. Hasn't gotten old, only gets better. Um, I, it's hard to believe that they can make something like this after a fast turnaround from last year's record, even though they have been workshopping a lot of these tracks like around the same time as this one. I was just watching a live performance from 2020 of Haldern, like, because that song is completely, uh, they didn't write that song. It just kind of happened. They just mm -hmm. improvised the whole thing. Um, and then it became that. So they've been doing this for like two years, um, and it finally came out. But I don't know. Some of the best tracks of like probably some of the tr best tracks I've ever heard, Basketball Shoes was like the most hyped up thing in the world. And I feel like I was a little bit mellow on it in the first reaction just because I was like so like overwhelmed with everything else on the record to that mm -hmm. point. Um, but Basketball Shoes is probably my favorite track now. Just every part of it is just so – it seems like – the big epic closer of like a band um yeah. like the culmination of everything they do well in the one track but uh i i watched shout out professor sky uh music channel um he's been covering this album extensively to the point where he's nerding out on it like i do which i hope more people do um because it deserves all the praise it's getting but he did a interview with four of the band members which is surprising mm -hmm. fantano could only get two um so, but he was talking to the band members and he was wondering why basketball shoes is called basketball shoes. Um, he got sent a picture of the drummer's shoes. Um, I don't, I don't know why I didn't pick up on this before, but he was wearing uh, Jordan 11s and the colorway was Concord. And I was like, you, okay. <laughs> it's so like on the nose, but at the same time, it's like, wow, that's like crazy to name the song that. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Everything about this album just seems perfect. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it, like, instantly clicks with you. It comes at the right time when you need it. I even felt it coming with the singles. I'm like, okay, something big's happening. I'm saving the date. It's getting closer and closer and closer. And then it actually lives up to the expectations I'm putting onto it, which never really happens. And if it does happen, I'm probably faking it to some extent. This one didn't. <laughs> um is like a perfect 10 out of 10 in my opinion. But I don't know. I, I don't know what else to really say about it. It's just kind of like there. And I could dig into every single track, but I'm not going to do that because this video will be two hours long. 
Yeah. Um, but I'm assuming all of you have listened to it if you're watching this video right now. Probably. Um, but, you know, listen to it again. I don't care. Um, excited to see where, where they go next. I know they're doing some festivals. Um, and I'm sure they'll be doing new music, new styles. Um, I don't know how they're going to do vocals now. I don't know if they're going to pull George off the violin and make her sing. I don't know. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, but as of now, instant classic, uh, best of the year, best of the decade. Um, yeah. Okay. And that is Black Country New Road. Channel Orange, Frank Ocean. I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> is it going? Yeah. Um, I think in the reaction, we were kind of, we weren't like lukewarm, but you know, especially comparing it to his newer two albums. This one is not as good, but I've been going back to this thing pretty regularly since the reaction, um, and I think I undersold it. I'm actually yes. really enjoying this thing. Um, you know, I knew Pink, Ma uh, Pink Matter was a classic when we uh, did the reaction, uh, and... Uh, Wow. Listening to it more, it is actively blowing me away every single time. Um, Frank gives like the vocal performance of a lifetime with that little run he That's does. Right after Bad Religion too. Yeah. Which is insane. It's it's so crazy. Uh and then the Andre verse Sizz, mm. I guess, because he has that little button at the end. Yeah. Um, but also fantastic. And then that transitions into Forrest Gump which I, it doesn't have <laughs> a right to be as good as it is for just this little goofy song about Forrest Gump to kind of wrap up the record. Just about Forrest Gump. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that it's about the plot of Forrest Gump. I'm not smart enough to dig into this whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's fine. Uh, you know, I know there, there's a whole dissect season about channel orange and blonde yes. isn't there but even just like me going through lyrics i was reading it through it i'm like wow this is like incredibly layered and dense but yeah funny, at the same time it's like whew, it just sounds so good it sounds very nice um but yeah even like i know i'm going on about the end but uh sierra leone i've been really thoroughly enjoying um especially that part, I think it's towards the end where like, there's like two key changes and then there's like mm. him doing like this vocal choir of himself and it is crazy good. Um, I think those three are probably my favorite on the record. So I really like this thing. Yes. Um, yeah, it's really great. Uh, I was trying to steer away because after, after thinking about you, I'm like, ooh, I need to steer them away. Otherwise, it's gonna, we're going to be stuck in a trap of comparing it to Blonde. Just because thinking about you, in retrospect, isn't the strongest track to start the album with. But it, does, it makes sense because it is the most like radio hit one. Mm. Um, but it's like quickly picks up in quality. Um, even just Fertilizer into Sierra Leone is like a huge quality jump. Yeah. Um, but for me, I think Pyramids has to be the standout track. Absolutely mind-blowing track um that's one of the things the weekend wishes he could do uh <laughs> yeah i mean he made two albums kind of like like let's see if i can embody this thing um and frank did it in like a 10 minute song and it's really fantastic um and there's a lot of storytelling elements here which is interesting because blonde is so much about feeling and place and time um and this one's like got storylines going through it he goes from like talking about like rich people, privilege, um, mental health, addiction, drug abuse, uh, sex work, um, like the advancement of technology and things. It's, it's, there's a lot going on mm -hmm. all through like a little TV channel like concept. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole record is really fantastic. Um, it's so weird that this gets overshadowed by Blonde just because of how good Blonde is. But this is like, this would be better than most artists' best album yeah like hands down and he's got blonde to top it somehow um but yeah really fantastic record i don't go back to it too often but there's always like this is like a summertime album for sure mm -hmm. um i always kind of have this one queued up for summertime 
along with Blonde. It's just Blonde's a little bit more mellow than this. This one's got like, you got Sierra Leone, you got Sweet Life, you got all these like very sunny tracks. Um, mm -hmm. And it's good to hear Frank like sing and have songs that aren't just like heart crushingly depressing. <laughs> um, yeah. Which is always like a bright spot. So, yeah, uh, really digging this one. Me too. Speaking of good albums, Dial It, Playboy Cardi. Uh, th th I don't like this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I we knew that that was going to happen going in. Um, it was a lot of fun, though. It was fun. I, yeah. I, I enjoyed the uh, video making of that yes. one. That one was a fun time. Um, but that one is definitely one when it shows up on the playlist, I'm, I skip it. Um, yeah, I... I don't know what it is about Playboy Cardi. I just don't like the shtick. Um, it's a lot of repetition. Um, and, you know, I think his his bars are pretty basic, but that's obviously, like, yeah. the point. Like, that's the, like, this isn't yeah. pointing out anything that's, like, it, that's obvious. Um, but it just isn't for me. Um, I do like uh, Shuda. With Lil Uzi Vert, and um, the guy, the one with the British guy on it's pretty funny. For real, he drinks Skepta. Yeah, that one's pretty silly. Yes. Um, but yeah, but whatever. The back, what is it? Backseat freestyle. Mm -hmm. I, I hate or that song. Flatbed, flatbed, flatbed freestyle. I hate that song. Backseat freestyle is a classic. That's the Kendrick song. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I really like that song. I but don't flatbed like flatbed freestyle is also a classic. I disagree. But. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah uh, i i really like this one um i i want to put a whole lot of red over it still just because like it is so eccentric and unique by any artist in that genre or any artist period like that's a huge like undertaking to be like i'm gonna make this style of album where i'm just like some e-boy of vampire that just screams over every track and makes like very sugary beats um but this one still it seems a lot more grounded a lot more traditionally like trap but his vocals are so eccentric. Um, I've had to learn to like repetition. Um, I haven't gotten into trap too much like prior, like last year probably, but I've slowly been getting into it. And Cardi is probably one of the top ones, in my opinion, when it comes to this repetition thing. Um, I don't know. It's just something where it's like we were listening to it in the wrong environment. But like, I don't know. The songs just were a lot of fun. Um, some went on way too long. That's kind of my main gripe with Cardi is that he has an idea and then takes it too far and stretches it for like a three and a half minute or four minute track which yeah. you don't need to do um peggy's got it nailed perfectly where he has an idea and he knows that's like okay this can fill a minute and a half and like be a fully fleshed out idea yeah um but i love the features on all this the features looked like they had a lot of fun they all kind of like did playboy cardi impressions which was funny yeah um but i'm loving pull up i love uh flatbed freestyle um Obviously, Shuda with Lil Uzi is great. Uh, long Time Intro is pretty good. Uh, Lean For Real with Skepta. Pretty good song. Um, but yeah, production's varied enough where it's not too stale. Um, it's nothing too insanely crazy, but, like, it's a really fun time. Um, and definitely one where it's like, hey, you party music. You just throw it on. It's a good time. Um, I'm excited to see what he does next. I don't know where he's going, but... Went out to the Donda 2 event wearing Joker face paint and screaming like a maniac. Um, so <laughs> I just love him. He's he's such a fun loving guy. Yeah, he's a, he's definitely a goofball. He is a goofball. Um, Speaking of funkadelic, goofy. <laughs> maggot brain, a little bit goofy. A little goofy record, mm -hmm. funkadelic, maggot brain. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of. I don't have any like negative things uh this is definitely like one of the most diverse uh records that we heard on this because it starts off very chill just with a guitar for like 10 minutes and that's like one of my favorite songs it's just the guitar uh Fantastic. i don't know who that is in the intro is that george clinton, it's george clinton. oh yeah. it sounds just like like a young morgan freeman on soul train a little uh, bit but uh yeah i i really enjoy that and then you get into some like cool in the gang stuff and it gets a little bit more traditionally funk 
and then it gets a little bit like more rock um i don't know it just kind of goes all over the place every song is different um but all around great 70s i don't even know if you can i guess technically it is funk but there isn't a lot of like the hallmarks of funk where there's like the the driving bass or you know stuff like that it's psychedelic rock it's life, psychedelic rock. The, the yeah. point of this album um yeah but yeah love the variation it's like it's a very short record mm-hmm. and it seems short because all the songs are so different where it's like you're really just like going through the motions but everything is just very pleasant um I just love how how it flows so well, despite being so different. Intro track's amazing. Um, yes. But yeah, I feel like there's not too much to say about it. Um, it, it is just like a really fantastic record. Everybody pulls their weight really well. Mm-hmm. Wars of Armageddon is one of the most interesting songs I've heard, um, for sure. So it, it, I, I like the stride of opening and ending your album with an obscure 10-minute track. <laughs> um, yeah. I dig it. Interested to see, uh, especially like Parliament. I'm interested in Parliament now, mm-hmm. just because like there are two sides of the same coin, but one's a lot more different genre than the other. Um, yeah, I think Parliament is a little bit more mainstream. It's a little, it's just a little bit more soulful, a yeah. little more uh, early R and B ish. Um, but I mean, old old school psychedelic rock will always be good to me, and this one definitely uh, holds that. Um, yeah. Last on the list, Last John one. Mayer Continuum. This you, one's start. Yours, you start. You start. <laughs> uh, good record. Um, I, I think it definitely deserves where it's at in the catalog and just in general. A lot of people show a lot of love for this album. Um, there's definitely tracks I like a lot more than others. I think there is a little bit of variation. Um, yeah. Waiting on the World to Change is cool, but like I'm not going to listen to it. Um, it does its purpose, but it's like I don't need any like very basic song mm-hmm. telling me that anymore, um, or ever, frankly. Um, but I, I mean, like you you have that, and then the other side you have "Stop This Train," which is like the best John Mayer song. Yeah, um, everything just works perfectly. Um, so there's a lot of good things here, not too varied in like song structure or anything, but I think everything still works pretty well. It's just very easy listening. Um, you can listen to the whole thing front to back very easily there's no like low spot really when you're doing that it's just kind of flowing um which is what you want especially in the soft rock genre blues well yeah um that that is that is the road bump is bold as love yeah um i think if you take bold as love off this record then i'm gonna rank it it a lot i i would too yeah just because like i the issue is the song not being good it's the issue is like the audacity of doing it and then putting (laughs) on a record and not just like as a single Cause like yeah, I don't know. It's just such such like a sour taste. Even though there's nothing like obscurely bad about it, it's just lacking heart, and mm. I don't really dig that. Um, yeah, I think if you get rid of that, then like the album flows a lot better. But that's my roadblock. But overall, I I really like the record. Um, again, I don't go to the style too often, but every once in a while, you're like, hey, this would sound nice right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that. Definitely a staple of the 2000s uh, rock yeah. scene. Yeah, I think it's a little odd that um, Bold as Love made the cut and then Say stayed as a single, um, which is, you know, the Say What You Need to Say song. Yeah, that's weird. And it even has the continuum, uh, like, <laughs> branding on it. Um, so it's a little weird, a little odd um, that one of his... You know, Bold as Love is one of his least popular songs and Say is one of his most popular songs. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> um, yeah, so weird. But I do, you know, obviously this is one of my favorite song or albums ever. Um, I think I ranked this as second in the 27 and a half albums video. Um, I think now it would rank a little bit lower just because I've heard, um, you know, Kendrick and the weekend now. now. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, still really, really fun. I, I still throw this thing on every once in a while. Um, so I don't know. I don't have a whole lot to say, but I don't know. It's nice. 
check it out. Good record. Mm hmm. So now is the, the part in the video where we take a yeah. look to the future. The future of what's the channel. Next? What's coming next? Um, we have what's going to be next is Nick Drake Pink Moon. So that's yes, what sir. we'll be recording next. That'll be coming out next week. After that, I think we're going to do another one of my picks. Is that right? Yes. And then we're going to LP. Viewer stuff. Yeah, LP and then Kate Bush. Yeah. And then from there, we'll figure it out. Um, we'll might, we might just do our, our wheels for another couple weeks and then another viewer reaction marathon. There's a lot, there's a lot but I kind of want to get to them. Um, yeah. Maybe something around the summertime or yeah. the start of summer, maybe. See? Could be fun. Um. So we'll show some pictures of our wheels now or not wheels, All just lists. our lists. Yeah. Um, so those will be flashing on the screen or not flashing, yes. but you know, pause if you want to read them, what, what could be coming up next, um, our fan suggestions. So if there's anything that you're itching to suggest that is already on the wheel, then you just wasted your one good suggestion. So there's a lot of stuff on the wheel. There so. is a lot. So, um, yeah, you might want to pause because it's almost you a, better a whole make it page a good long. one if you're going to request because otherwise you're taking away the chance of another person's album getting picked. That's that right. That could be a good one too. I don't know. The one there's guy who's been waiting for Blur 13 since That's true. the very beginning. He's been holding it down for six months or however long it's been. <laughs> I feel like uh, we do we'll, LP, we'll give it to The him. Dreaming, we'll give it and to Blur him. 13. Yeah, we'll just bump Blur up there. <laughs> get out of the way, Mitski. Yeah. I have Mitski on my personal wheel, so we'll probably we'll get, get it. We'll get it. And uh, um, you'll probably do Charlie, too. So Yeah, um, I do want more Charlie. Um, I don't know. The new Charlie stuff hasn't been itching the same thing. How I'm feeling now is great, and then like the new record's looking very mainstream popish, and I'm not digging it as much. So. But didn't she say that if you don't like the new single, then there is something objectively wrong with your brain? Well, I mean, the single's good, but like you can't put that up to like <laughs> something like Detonate or like Pink Diamonds. It's it, you, you can't. It's not possible. I think she would disagree with. I you. love Charlie though, so it's fine. Yeah, she can do what she wants. Of course, I don't care. Um, Pop two, we will be doing that one eventually. Are you, I'm going to put that on my wheel right now. Um, put that on your wheel. On there. So, there's our look to the future, the state of our channel, and state of the union. State of the union, Jack. We are going to be listening to a lot of sad albums. I'll tell you what, Jack. We're going to be crying on camera for the next three <laughs> weeks. Very true. So yeah, there we go. I just messed up my lighting. Bring it back. There we go. There you go. Epic. I don't know what else to add after this. Yeah. Um, if you made it this far, what's wrong with you? That's right. You don't watch our videos. <laughs> um, you are too invested. <laughs> just kidding. Well, you know. This is, the, this is the secret part of the video. Yeah. This is where we plug things. Yes. It's very secret. Yeah. If you have something to suggest, suggest it. We'll... We might listen to it. Who knows? You saw the. Yeah, you saw how long, too long that this point where we, we can't guarantee anything anymore. So we might get it. Who knows? Um, yeah. But you know, there's a chance. Uh, and if you just can't get enough of us, we do have a Twitter. We do have a podcast where we talk about a bunch of entertainment news um, that isn't just music. So we talk about movies and TV shows. I and, do talk about music over there too. Well. So. Yes, but it's more of like uh, you're talking about the news, like what's yes. coming out, what you're listening to, um, a little bit more off the cuff. It isn't as structured yeah. as this is. If there's any new releases that you want to hear me talk about that I won't do a reaction for, it's over there. It's over there. Because I, I don't got time to listen to a Big Thief album that's an hour and a half on camera. Although you know, we did get, I think we did get that one suggested. And I was no, like, it's a different I, one. No, we got the, the new one suggested. Oh, did we? we did. Okay. It was before it came out. Someone suggested it, and they oh. said, this is going to be coming out. You should check this out. Um, Done. I did it. Abby did. Top three. Top three of the year. Um, he, yeah, he really liked it. So yes. that person, if you're here, if you've listened, if you've got I this didn't see your comment, and I listened. <laughs> <laughs> I broke the rules. That was the only um, one I didn't add, because I was like, Abby already heard that one. It's too long. Yeah. Um, so, sorry. 
a, another big thief one's already on there. So true. There's a chance. Um, so yeah, podcast, Twitter, you can see how I, uh, lash out at it's Joe just, Rogan. It's just him. It's, or is it, are you on this side? I, I'm on. Yeah. You were going to point okay. this way. Yeah, yeah. It's just this guy. I am not, I'm barely affiliated with that Twitter account. So whenever you see a tweet, it's most likely him. It, it is me. Yeah. Um, so, you know, hang out with me, tweet at me, see, see if American airlines ever gets back at me or anything it would be very funny um but yeah there we go everything is in the description check out our spotify playlist see what we hated what, what i hated i love all music i don't that's the Except crux of nasty the show. weezer cringe oh i hate, I cringe. hate weezer. weezer cringe band Ooh. weezer sucks weezer but the blue album was pretty good yeah, Pinkerton's pretty good too. I would, I would say. I didn't really like Pinkerton. Okay, Human's kind of cool too. Dude. Just go yeah. Quirky. It... Van Weezer's pretty good too. Now that I think about it. Yeah, and the Teal and album. The, the Teal album. It is a classic. Some good I covers think about it. it. Yeah. The Black album where they're wearing BDSM <laughs> stuff. That's kind of yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. The latex suits are kind of cool. Mm. And how could we forget Pearly? <laughs>